And look at them looking around. You'd think they were in the last kilometre here. Yes, well, of course, you know, it's uh, a little bit more complicated now with the men sitting on here and... Uh, the two that are doing the riding on the front, you know, they're not going to give uh, too much of an effort because he's going to attack and when he does attack, who is going to you know, do uh, the close down immediately? That can be a little bit uh, of a complicated one for you know, the uh, two here. The two strongest men, the two fastest men we would expect. Berwick, don't know. You know much about his career, but he looks like a rider is more of a climber. He wouldn't be uh, a real, you know, a strong man in the sprint compared to the two other ones. And uh, he's continuing on to sit here, and we can see Dense is just looking around, trying to encourage him to come through and do a bit as we go through five to go. But yeah, when you get a sit on like this for a number of kilometres, then normally they will, you know, try and just choose your moment right and. You never know if they just look at each other when he does attack, he might just get that gap and be able to go all the way. Will he be getting into their heads a little playing this game as well? Well, I think already we're seeing that because the way they're riding, you know, they're not riding at all uh, anywhere near their full on uh, because they're keeping a bit in reserve because of he, because of him being sitting in the wheels here and you know getting the big advantage uh, drafting there and getting an easier ride. Of course, if the gap was smaller, this group would be riding and getting very excited. But it's 3 minutes 11, and with just over 4 kilometres to go, no matter how much they miss about, they're not going to catch them. At 8.5 minutes, the Magliaros at this group, they're already thinking about tomorrow, aren't they now? Yes, well, I think uh, for quite a number of hours they've been thinking <laughs> about the day to come. And, uh, you know, when the, uh, the hectic race and, uh, stopped and we, they got that breakaway go go away and uh, Inyo started to ride on the front uh, certainly you know the team uh, Inyo Grenadiers and also the other GC men were thinking yeah this is going to be an easier day now a steady pace and uh, tomorrow is the is the big day the first real big one in the mountains four kilometers to go as a German stage win 24 hours ago we might be getting the Giro d'Italia auf Deutsch if we get Nico Denz crossing the line again. Back-to-back -back German wins, maybe. We've already had two Aussie wins at this Giro. The last Latvian win at the Giro came in 1999. It's been 24 years. And Tom Scoinge has an opportunity to fly his nation's flag again. I say fly his nation's flag again, it wasn't him that won <laughs> 24 years ago. <laughs> Romans Van Steins. That was in Foggia down in Puglia. We're in the far northwest here, the opposite end of the country, as the shoes are being tightened for the sprints. Head on. Mannerisms being executed. Are they ready? They've worked so hard to get here. Yes, well, they have you know, really worked uh, hard uh, to get into that break today. It was you know, uh, a real strong man's breakaway and uh, the big battle. And you know, when you get uh, to this point, uh, even though you know, the fatigue, the legs are you know, starting to feel it, still you know, that nervousness builds up because as you get ever so close, three kilometres to go, you, know, you're, you're, you really start feeling that. And, you can feel that tension building and yeah it's going to be for all of those guys now you can see just out there a stage victory first time for uh, for all three and i think our man on the ground jens voigt he'll be more nervous maybe than the three riders <laughs> here on the road they love the breakaway he still does and, look, and looking for, for a so german win again he will be he will be let's hope he can be uh, nice and quick to the winner we got to hear from the winner brilliantly yesterday great work jens <laughs> Two and a half days to go. And here they are. Berwick, ever since battling back on, has been sitting on. He knows this is his chance. Game waits, watches. Ever so slightly up here. We know from seeing the finish that after the left turn, there's a kick up, isn't there? Yes, and uh, you know, as we go into uh, inside the f uh, what the two kilometers, uh, what 300 meters, we have that uh, right hand turn. And as we heard Jens saying, it's not a nice finish, it's a complicated one. 
And with three riders, you know, you'd expect no problem at all here. But that's the time somebody might, you know, dive up the inside or dive into a corner and it could go all wrong. And, you know, this is not a nice finish. And then, of course, it does kick up as well, as we see. So, yeah, th there's a lot to think about this, but power will be important in the run, the final run to the line, you know, the guy who have got the most left in the legs. It's almost like a three-up track sprint here. Two kilometres to go. Except they're not always turning left to the finish. It's left, right, it's up and down. 1,800 metres to go in stage 12 of the Giro d'Italia. In the red, Latvian rider from Trek Segafredo, that's Tom Scrooge. In the green and black, looking to make it two German wins on back-to-back -back days, Nico Dins. And at the back here, an opportunity for Sebastian Berwick to take his first professional win. Dens there, trying to follow Pascal Ackermann. The last time we had back-to-back -back German wins at the Giro, Andre Kaipel and our very own Jens Vogt back in 2008. Dens has been searching for this victory, hasn't he, for years. Second in a two-up breakaway with Matej Mohoric in Guallo Tadino back in 2018. He's since won a mountain stage of the Tour de Suisse. In the middle there, Squinge, he's won national championships. He's won at the Tour of California, a hilly classic in the northern Italy. Approaching the kilometre to go now. You can already see it turning left and right and going up and down. Tactics are going to be important here. When to go, but it's what's in the legs that will surely make the difference. Bora Hansgrohe won this race last year with Jai Hindley. Looking to take their first stage win of this edition. That will calm the nerves just a couple of days after they lost one of their two GC leaders. Look at this. The corners, how they take them. It's Denz who's been forced to lead this out because on paper he's the fastest. Berwick waits at the back. Israel Premier Tech waiting for their first World Tour win of the season. It would have been a long time coming. But we're almost getting the point now where the moves have to be made. They slow, they watch each other like hawks. Four hours, 17 minutes since they set off and got into a 30-man breakaway. Stage 12 began in Bra, around the vines of the Lange region, who will be toasting with a glass tonight. Uphill they come, 400 metres to go now, final turn. Downhill here, and then they'll see the finish line. It's Dens at the front in the green. You can see that winding it up now in the red and white, it's Squinge. Berwick now is going to have a go. He's waited, he's waited. Here he does go. Now, does he have the strength against the big guys? Because you can see Dens is there at the front, holding that front. On his wheel at the moment is Squinge. Berwick sits up, he's out the game. It's Nico Dens all the way. It's Nico Dens all the way. He goes, he goes, and finally it's his. Nico Dens banishes the bad memories of Gualdo Tadino and wins stage 12 of the 2023 Giro d'Italia. He went looking for it. He held on with heart, courage, grit and determination over the climb. And he is a deserved winner. The Giro Auf Deutsch as its back-to-back -back German stage wins. And just look at what it means to him.